One, I would say that um, extra precaution needs to be put into place. Responsibility falls within the person who holds the firearm. You really have to take care of your firearm. Yes. It is no longer an excuse of saying that it could happen to anyone. We don't have a second choice or a second chance with firearms. Once a firearm is discharged, it has been discharged. And you are responsible for the final resting place of that bullet that is discharged from your firearm. This is not a tool to be used to be carried like a wallet. It's not a tool to be used or to be carried like a phone. It's not a tool to be used Even wallets, just like Even wallets, some wallets in some hidden places for that matter because you, you don't want to lose your ID <laughs> and your ATMs. Yeah, right. but you'd see yeah. that look at the population of Kenya today on how many people have do, this, have, do have these firearms and the number of cases that would come out of such scenarios. Right. Um, I would say that first and foremost, the kind of gear that you're using, let me refer back to your case when you say that the person was sitting down and he left the firearm on the couch and mm. when he came back he found the firearm was missing. I'm not very familiar with what exactly happened in that case. But I have seen situations where we have um, certain equipment that we use called yes. holsters. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a proper holster to carry your firearm, you would be sitting down like say in a competition where mm -hmm. you've been told there's a start position where you have to sit down and you stand up and then you start shooting before you stand up the firearm will have dropped because yes. your holster doesn't have the right linear to hold it on mm -hmm. or doesn't have the right lockings to hold it on or you're using the wrong holster for the wrong firearm some could be because of lack of enough finances to get the right mm -hmm. equipment mm -hmm. one could be also because of um maybe the holster has broken and you're not aware about it because there is wear and tear on them. The other one could also be because you're not using a holster. Yes. And if you're sitting down on a couch and you're not using a holster and you've tucked in your firearm and you're standing up, that firearm could drop. Mm. But you see, when you carry a firearm on each and every day of your life, it is part of you. Yes. The feeling of you noticing you have a firearm on you is not very easy. It's not something that you feel it's pressing on you that you'd realize that it is now dropped off. Yeah. So you'd find that it's unfortunate that maybe the parent was sitting down on the couch. When he stood to go to the washroom, it fell off. When he got to the washroom, he felt he did not have it. When he comes out, he finds it's not on the couch. When he looks for it, he finds it's already gone to the other level. There is no excuse there about saying that it could have gone wrong, it could not have gone wrong. Mm. But what I say is that when you have the right gear, some of these things can be avoided. Based on what you're saying, Sami, then it, this, this brings the aspect of training. Yes, you can Regular say training. training Regular and refresher training. courses. Consistency, yes. Yeah. There has to be some level of consistency when you're looking at how to develop your own skills. Um, when you own a firearm and you become a safekeeper and you simply leave it in your safe, you never use it to, to go to your daily business. Mm. You never use it to go for training. You never use it to come out and do some sports with it, which can create a lot of proficiency. Yeah. You simply leave it in the safe. So when you're traveling out of the country, you know you're still comfortable that it's in your safe. Mm -hmm. And when you're leaving to go maybe to, uh, your, your, to, to Geshagi or to your own other errands, mm. it is normally in the safe. So to you, it is in the safe, it is okay in the safe. Yeah. And that is fine with you. But I'll tell you no. That is not right, because now you've developed a syndrome that it is fine. This item is safe. Mm. But how regularly do you check and see that it is safe? You would be sending your son or your daughter to the safe to go and get something else, because now you already have a safe. Is it a safe for your firearm only? Yes. Or is it a safe that you've combined to be used also for you to put money, or for you to put other keys, mm. or you to put title deeds, mm. or you to put other documents in it? So when you're sending somebody to the safe to go and collect these documents yeah. from the safe, they tend to see the firearm. They'll see it today, they'll see it tomorrow, they'll see it the next day, they'll see it another day. Yeah. So when something flips in them, or they watch video games, mm. or there's a game that is being played, or he has discussed they'll with be tempted other, to rush there. they'll be tempted to go and take it and see how. How do they get to know how to use it? They can go through YouTube, and they will learn how to use this. So that's why I'm saying the, the, the ages of today, 13 years, 14 years, 15 years, 16 years, should not be taken like kids. That is, a, that is an age of experimenting Yes, things. they should not be taken like kids. These right. are not children. These are not children. These are people who are aware of what they are surrounding. They are aware of what is happening. 
In fact, when you have a problem with your phone, how come you call them and you give it to them and they fix it and give it back to yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. But then on the other hand, you want to treat them as if they're so ignorant, they don't know what is around it.